represent. Geico with Hackers and Jackers here on Represent Radio. And I am joined by the architect of that very sound. Geico, thank you for joining me in the studio. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolute pleasure. Also, double thank you for being so nice because I've been hounding you for ages. I've wanted to start for ages. So right. I'm glad this happened. Mm. So kicking off then, uh, you have been like globe trotting all over the place yep. recently. You've been here, there and everywhere. Which is kind of fitting because obviously one of the reasons I wanted you in was to talk about Basic Volume, your latest records. Mm -hmm. And that in itself was sort of the product of a intercontinental exploration, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've been travelling or I've been kind of in and out of the country for a long, long time. And I think the album was, that, the album was made just all around. A lot of it was made in America. A lot of it was made kind of just where I was on tour or where I was situated at the time so I guess I wanted to make something that was like about being or about being the eternal immigrant you know like always being the kind of stateless person because that's kind of how I feel so mm. I just made it in that way and have continued to live in that way um, and like you said that in contrast to the record that you made before that uh, you kind of considered that as like a London dystopic focus, with like yeah. a London dystopic focus. And I guess what I wanted to know was, I feel like with your music, it's quite a product or it's intertwined with the experiences that you are feeling yourself or the socio-political environment that you're within. Yeah. How do you feel that um, shaking up those places around you, those experiences, how do you feel like that fed into the final product of the latest record? I didn't shake that. I didn't. I can't shake up those places like, yeah. on one man. Do you know what I mean? I think I can. I can change my immediate environment, and I can try and influence people uh, by telling the truth. As far as you know, it occurs to me. I'd be kind of arrogant to suggest that I could shake up them places. Oh, sorry. I mean, I mean more. How did those places shake up what you produce? So uh, I know you wanted to like avoid the London dystopia, but then you sort of were in. America for Trump's inauguration oh, yeah, and how yeah. did those sort of new experiences around you feed into what you created? Oh, I see what you mean. Apologies. Um, well, yeah, I just, I think I just realised certain things about information in the world and it made me really think about what, like, what it meant to be me, what it meant to be second generation immigrant, like, what, where, where am I from, you know? It, like the inauguration of Trump just sort of was like well okay you know this could go terribly terribly wrong so w where would I go if I had to leave mm. and what you know what does it mean to be an immigrant I think it definitely all of these things that definitely posed posed that question to me like over and over and over again and I kind of then decided to you know make a record that was a, about my experience of that in in a kind of enormous way, and how and the eternal nature, almost like the same questions coming up all the time in a way. Yeah, or just like that, it never it never goes away. You know, like you, you live your life, you, you know, you live a life somewhere for fifty years, sixty years, a hundred years, and you're never really from that place. And as no matter how hard you try, you try and you try and prove yourself as being from that place through like attainment, through success. You know, that's why immigrant communities we have this desire to be successful like you gotta work hard you gotta be your value is based on you know how well you fit in mm -hmm. I just and you know that can lead to trauma um, so I decided to write about that you know no matter where I go I'm constantly trying to prove that it's not it's like it's not okay to kill me that you belong there. Yeah, yeah. Well, just no, no, it's just okay for me to be alive. Like. Yeah. So, that, when we do so by like attainment, this is why it's like, well, okay, be a doctor, be a lawyer, you like, affords you a certain amount of stability, but also, you know, it means that these are things that are in, integral to society, right? Right. So, and if you don't, if you don't look that way and you don't do those things, then you're the enemy. Like, existence isn't enough and it should be enough. Yeah, it should be enough. It's like, we, when it's when it's inverse, you know, when it's like 
immigration from like Europe outwards. It wasn't like people were colonizing countries and saying, oh yeah, we're sending the best. You've got to be the best. You can only be the best to... to, to, to and a lot uh, of times the complete opposite. The complete that. opposite, right? So it, it just made me focus on, and think about that what it means to constantly be trying to attain you know you've got to, you've got to be an upstanding citizen you've got to work hard you've got to be somebody and what that chase you know like it can have um it, 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 there's a cost to it what it does to you as a person what it does to you what does, well, more so what it does to your family what it does to your loved ones you know well, as men like what that does to our partners you know particularly when they're women it's like oh, I, I don't, I'm not worth anything because this guy tells me I'm a scumbag and barges me on the train, so I'm gonna take that home and I'm gonna I'm gonna inflict that that injustice upon my family. And you know that's why the record kind of ends with saying like it's okay to love, it's okay to trust. You know, so you can be. You know, it's it's not all about making it. Like some of it, let's just like look at ourselves. You know and. I guess poses a question like where we're, what, where are we from other than from ourselves from home from our environment from the people that we love mm. and that love us and it's like what you were saying earlier that it's that big difference basically I, I, when you were talking about how people are viewed when they move to other countries and things like that the big one for me is the, the difference between expat and immigrant Yeah. how comes when people go from Britain they're expats and everybody else is an immigrant what? I've never understood that this is white supremacy, like, this and like when my like family came over from Ireland, people would refuse to give them a, a place to stay. Would refuse yeah. to say no blacks, no Irish, no dogs, like nothing. And then British people can go and get a flat in Spain, and you're an expat immediately. Yeah, well, it's just it's just one another one of these um, kind of like clever or like really subtle things in English language, you know, which is just a demarking different you know making difference in, in people that's convenient you know I mean like look at the end of the day people there's people out in the street that go out and they do crud to get money and then there, there are soldiers that go out and do crud to get money we just call them different things you know what I mean like it, it, I try to look at it's just semantics eff- yeah not- I try to look at the effect of something rather than the semantics yeah and I guess a lot of my work is about, po- about pointing that out pointing that out for your latest record, one of the things that um, I found really interesting as someone has followed the the, the different albums that you've released, um, I liked that you purposely went to make it more, in your words, like polished and more of like a, not so much a bunch of experiments, not that I would call your last stuff that, but very polished, yeah. a little bit more hooky. Yeah. And um, when I was reading about that and especially knowing, you know, what what you've spoken about being in the record, I, what made me come to my head straight away is the idea of like funk music and yeah. how really recently before that I was reading about uh, a lot of funk artists like your Curtis Mayfield, your Stevie Wonders later on, mm. um, your Marvin Gaye's where one of the big things about it was that it was issues that were exposing the worst elements of society, yeah. the most rotten parts of society, but in a way that was hooky and full of style and I kind of put those two things together. Would you say that's fair in any way? Yeah, I mean, like, people, I think people are starting to get it. Like, I'm quite into boogie music, funk music. Yeah. Like, so, and it was always, you know, um, it was definitely that, you know, like, at the end of the day, there's something, that music is a music of clubs. And I think clubs is where people kind of, like, sweat out all their kind of demons, you know? Mm. And I wanted to make something that felt like, kind of like nice to listen at but then when you when you examined it you you realize that actually there's some pretty deep things to say or some some pretty brutal things that i was trying to confront in that record but i didn't want to you know it's this thing of somebody shouting and screaming like the angry devil the angry black devil it's just like a cliche and it just it's so easily packaged and so easily understood and so easily like discarded Mm. you know like some journo says some indie journal who does know knows nothing about rap music turned around and it was like, oh yeah, the thing is, it's not he's not angry enough. You know what I mean? It's like, who are you to tell me how angry I need to be? Oh, are you listening? Yeah. Like what? What? 
like listen to what I'm saying on that record. It's just I just it just proved my point. People like that are not listening, you know, and, and unless it or they are and unless it can be a thing like, well, there you go, why is he why is he so mad? He's just out of control, right? You know, like for me, my thing when it comes to aggression in, in music is controlled aggression. Like somebody screaming and shouting to me is not doesn't make the point. Somebody making their point with with calmness and with like actual means, actual force, mm. like is much more impactful than somebody just screaming. Like, and there's something to be said as well for like when the music itself could stand alone from a message and grab you, yeah. and then when you listen to it two, three, four times, you're discovering more and more things that you didn't even notice because the hook was so good. I feel like there's something quite magical about that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm into the mystery objects, you know, like you examine it and then each time you look at it, it's a different thing. Um, and you understand it. I want people to kind of listen to my work and listen to it over and over again and learn more about it and try and, you know, I don't, I, I don't assume that the people who listen to my music are not intelligent. I don't have to make it easy for everyone to get it. You know what I mean? But I, I do want people to, I, I do want people to like feel good when they listen to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I do want people to like enjoy the sound of the music. So I try and do those things, make music that is like nice to listen to. Uh, I sort of try and do this album nice to listen to and like creates emotion, like physical emotion, like touches your body. But also when you unpack the lyrics, you understand that there's like depth to it. But I feel like you're that kind of artist because you, to me, because I've seen you're also into design and the way that your visual art comes into it, I almost feel like you're, it, it, everything that's produced is like executed to like such a wide conceptual level mm -hmm. that you're always discovering more things. It's a bit like a treasure trove, do you know what I mean? The more you delve into it, like the imagery of your videos and how that links back into your lyrics, like it's it's quite exciting to watch as a as or to consume as a consumer of that. I mean, I hope so. I just like build these kind of worlds in my head, and and more and more, I just want them to be completely populated. Um, why not? Like, not everything has to be simple. Not everything has to be like, oh, let me just quickly do this and get some money out of it. You know, I spend money on my work because I want, I just want it to be good. I want it to be, you know, if art is kind of. Manifestation, or manifestation of our imagination. Like my imagination is quite, I think it's quite wide. So yeah, I'm you create your well. own futuristic dystopic universes and everything. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot coming. So boy. Um, Speaking yeah. of the show, it's nearly over. Well, is there anything that you want to shout to all of us about that we should be paying attention to coming up for you? Yeah, I got. A, I'm gonna say it here first, coming Britain. I got a new mixtape and yes. or project that's gonna come out soon. Called Heat is for the two seaters. Um, and it's, I mean, if you think that this, you think the last one was kind of deep, this is very, very many layers to it like physical kind of like structures, digital spaces, and of course, music like clothes a whole lot. I'm just trying to really bring people into, into my wor world as a kind of like, I guess, artist in many dimensions beautiful thank you for that exclusive i'm so excited to hear it all um i'm gonna sign off i actually this is inspired by you because when i was uh doing a little bit of research you mentioned prince yeah. and i was listening to a black album like a few days before that so i thought i gotta do it this is cindy c on represent radio guy it's been such a pleasure thank you thank you represent, represent.